What's happening everybody? Willie here at the Great Outdoors. You know, the season is upon us again. The sun is popping out, the pollen is trying to wash away with every thunderstorm that comes through, and the coolness of the mornings are blending into some pretty hot afternoons. Which means, what are you going to do? Well, it's time to get outside. It's time to get outside and do things. And one of those things that I enjoy doing uh, not just fishing, not just camping, not just Honda monkeys, and not just cutting the grass and washing cars, but I enjoy bicycles. Now, any of you that have been with me for a while know I'm a bicycle freak. I love bicycles. I always have. I've got bunches of them through the years and cleaned them up and made campground bicycles out of them. And I've had friends that have needed bicycles through the years out of ones that I've found and I've been able to give away bikes. I've been able to sell bikes. I've been able to do a lot of things when it comes to a bicycle. So I've recently picked up another bike. And I thought it would probably be a good idea for those of you who are out there that maybe still want to get on your bicycle and go for a ride, or maybe you're looking for a bicycle. What to look for and what you can do to take care of it yourself to make something that may not look all that great become something that looks pretty darn good and will kind of make people's eyes bug out of their head when they see the aftermath of what you've done with it. So we're going to go out here to the garage and then we're going to go into the backyard and then we're going to get wet probably. I know that wet part kind of throws you off, but it happens when you're cleaning bicycles and messing with bikes and adjusting gears and brakes and things. You get dirty. It happens. But the result is well worth the work. I can tell you right now. So let's hop outside. I'll show you what I have found, how much I paid for it, where I found it. And uh, so maybe it will help you out in your search for a bicycle for the campground or for around the neighborhood or the bike path or whatever, whatever you need a bicycle for. We can get you set up for whatever way you want to use it. So anyway, let's head out there and we'll take a look at what I found. Now, what you are looking at is a Cannondale Adventure 5. It's a hybrid bike, meaning it kind of has the framework of a mountain bike, but the skinny thin tires like a road bike. So you can do a little bit of everything. You can do some soft trails and gravel roads, and you can also get on some paved bike paths and things like that and go pretty fast, move on pretty quick. What you're probably going to notice here is she's pretty dirty. This is a simple case of road hard and put away very wet and dirty. Got some decent components on it, Shimano stuff. You have your Shimano Alivio rear derailleur. You have a SRAM front derailleur. Somebody has over-greased the chain, which is typical, which is all the stuff you see all over the wheels and the derailleur there. Pro-Max rear brake seat pole with a shock inside. That's right. Take away a little bit of that beating and banging when you go on those uh, trails and gravel roads. You have an adjustable stem or gooseneck, depending on how far back you go. All right, you got some Shimano shifters up here. What do they call these? Revo shift. That's kind of neat. Kind of like a motorcycle. You need to pull back on the throttle, basically change your gears. You have that for both sides. You have a shock on the front for some uh, dual comfort there to add to your seat pole. Cannondale brake levers. You have double wall rims, which are really nice. A Shimano crank. 
really what you have here is a pretty nice bicycle. I found this at the Goodwill. That's right, in the Goodwill. This bike, probably brand new, was probably in the $450 to $500 range. Now, I'm just guessing here because I can't find one to be able to tell you. Uh, but judging by the components and no one bikes as I do, that's probably where this bicycle fell because it's a Cannondale. It's not a cheap bike. Uh, cheap bike. Let's talk about cheap bikes for a minute. Walmart, Target, places like that. Uh, they sell bicycles. Some of their bicycles used to actually be in bike stores like Schwinn, for example, Mongoose, Diamondback. These were bicycles that you used to buy in a bicycle shop. You couldn't buy these in just stores. Very nice bicycle. And when we're done with it, it's going to be a very, very, very nice bicycle. Bumblebee just tried to fly out my nose. I looked online and was finding these bikes used. I saw one sell for about 175 bucks. I saw one sell for about 150 bucks. And then uh, this one I picked up at the Goodwill for $80. And we're going to turn it into a fully functioning, good looking, proud to be on it bicycle. So we're back here, I got the bike on the rack here. We're gonna do some cleaning. Uh, I'm gonna show you a couple things that'll just help you out when you go to, say, a Goodwill or a thrift store or yard sale or something like that and you see a bike that you're interested in. Uh, these things will tell you that the bike owner really didn't know a lot about a bicycle or about bicycles in general. And uh, it might help you in your choice of the bike itself and how much they're asking for it and that kind of thing. One thing you've already seen, over-greasing the chain. Over-oiling the chain can make an absolute 100% mess, okay? I'm gonna show you the rims and all of that stuff real quick. Okay, you see all those spots on the rims? That is oil, that is oil and grease where they have over-oiled the chain and it has flung off onto the rim. Now, that can be gotten off sometimes and sometimes it can't. In this particular instance, I think we might be able to get some of that off and it'll clean up pretty good and look pretty nice. But that's one thing, uh, if you see that, that just means they were not really bike people and had no idea what they were doing. All right, number two, brake adjustment. This is a brake adjustment right here. That can help you get more pull out of your lever. These. I don't know if you can see both of them or not, but anyway, you can see on this one, it has never been adjusted. Otherwise, this would be out some. The brake lever is going all the way to the grip and touching because it's never been adjusted, ever. As the brake pads wear in, and I say wear in, the brake pads touch the rim, the rubber wears off the brake pad, the brake lever gets further and further and further and further back to the handle grip. You have to adjust them to make them perform correctly, okay? And when you see that, when you see that this has never been adjusted ever in the life of the bike, you know you're dealing with somebody who just wanted a bicycle, bought a bicycle, took it home, rode it, over-greased the chain, and basically there you go. So anyway, now we're going to hit this cleanup process and hope that it will clean up. These are Brillo pads. I hate them, okay? SOS is much better, much better. But 
this was all they had the day that I went into Food Lion to get them at the grocery store. This was all they had. So that's what I had to get. Now sometimes you can use a steel wool on the frame, just don't use it hard on the paint because you will scratch the paint up. I do wax these bicycles when I'm done, which brings the paint back around again. So some of the greasy spots that I can't get off with a sponge or soap and water, I will use the steel wool lightly to try to get that off and then I'll wax that area really good. Okay, there's kind of your before and after after using a little steel wool, the Brillo pad, and the soap cleaned up pretty good. So that looks real nice. Looks a lot better than it did. No more spots. Doesn't look like a silver Dalmatian. And uh, all the spokes are nice and shiny and silver like they're supposed to be now. Okay, I'm going to show you something else real quick. That uh, This is one of those things where you think you're really doing good by your bicycle. Uh, you're doing the right thing. And technically you are, but it's one of those things that can really do more damage to your bike than you really know. I'm going to show you that real quick. This is where the bicycle was put in a bike rack. These marks you see here are basically where the rubber uh, holding device, I guess you want to say, goes across it and it sits in the bracket on the back of say a trailer hitch or uh, the, the what do you the trunk mounted or hatchback mounted bicycle racks those are plastic and rubber and yes they do keep your bike still as much as possible but those racks those brackets will scratch the ever living you know what out of your bike and that's what happens when you have a light colored bike you get to see this stuff where it really tears that bike up now I'm going to try to wax that out and hopefully it will. Some of it is deep scratches that probably won't come out. But I'm going to hope and, uh, that I can get some of that out of there. But just remember, when you put your bike in a bike rack, this is the kind of stuff that can happen. Sometimes if you take a towel and just wrap around where the bike grips, or the rack grips the bike, you can stop that from happening. Here's another area on your bicycle you always want to take care of. This is your shock okay and right in here there are seals inside of here and those seals go up and down on this supposedly smooth surface that you see here these have a tendency to rust if they rust the rust that you see on here is going to be moving up and down in the seal that goes into this shock and sometimes shocks can leak and just become worthless and torn up and then you have to have that stuff replaced. So if you just take, go over it with your little Brolo pad there, you can take the rust and stuff off there before you really use the bike and get that all cleaned up and nice and smooth so when it goes down inside there, you're not tearing seals up. Now when it comes to handlebars, a lot of handlebars you're gonna find, they get this dull film on them or they get some rust, things like that, or you get uh, like this thing here, for example, this was most likely a reflector uh, that's just not there anymore. And that bracket, obviously, I, I might have a couple of reflectors in the, uh, in the garage in there and some of my stuff that I could put back on there. But I'm going to take that off and get it gone. And then you can clean up the handlebars and get them nice and shiny again. It might take a little elbow grease sometimes to get that stuff to go away, but it's worth it in the end. Bike looks a lot better when you're done. Now this area here is always a 100% uh, 
knuckle buster pain in the butt to try to get to and I'm not gonna lie to you it's no fun because it's very hard with the bike in one piece all together to get down here and clean these spots but you just go ahead and do it last and when it's done it's done a lot of grease likes to get in these areas here especially when you have an overachiever with the WD-40 it's important to know the WD-40 too is, is it's a very thin lubricant but it's also it helps break loose thick nasty stuff that you can you know like if this grease or whatever he's put on this chain which you can see it's been greased you hit it with WD-40 well it loosens all that stuff up and when it does and you go for a ride that's when it ends up all over your paint your legs your pants your wife behind you the kid in the little trailer that you were pulling behind the bicycle and uh, it's just ugly so get the correct stuff from the bike shop go to the bike shop and ask what do I need to use they should always have what you need to lubricate your chain correctly now one of the things I like to do after I wash the bike I like to take my little air compressor and just blow all the water and junk out of the little nooks and crannies all over the bike because when I'm waxing it you'll catch places that you didn't get dry good and uh, me being impatient as I am that happens I hit some of the wet spots on the bike that I just didn't get the water dried out good so I'll take my air compressor and blow the water off. all right when it comes to cleaning the frames on these things the wax that I use Mother's California Gold. I have used this stuff since the 80s when it was a paste in a can. And it's, it just makes things look a lot nicer. And this is actually a Brazilian Carnuba cleaner wax. So it'll take out a lot of the spots and nasty areas and then also shine the paint up. I love using this stuff. And some people are turtle wax people, some people are Meguiar's, whatever. But me, Mother's California Gold. Now I'm going to take you over here and show you the spot that uh, the bike rack kind of messed up. Maybe you'll be able to see a difference. Oh yeah. Unfortunately, that is a chip right there, and I can't do anything about that. Of course, it had to be right in the center of the white part. You have to be proud of your stuff, because one day your stuff is going to be somebody else's stuff. And you're going to want them to at least have something nice. If they decide they don't want to take care of it, well, at least they got something nice in the process. It's kind of morbid to look at it that way, I guess, but... It's true, whether you want to believe it or not. Now yeah, look at that. Slick as glass. That one little chip right there, I can't do anything about. That's actually down to the metal, so I can't do anything about that. But that looks good. Bike's going to look real nice. It's funny this bike had to be blue and white. I think we know how I am about blue and white. Between the monkey in the Himalayan of course I do have a red and white monkey as well might be hard to let go of this one let me keep cleaning let me make it even harder for me to get rid of it
This is the part I like the most. I guess you could say that this is my doing the thing for the bicycle. So I have adjusted the brakes. Very simple, no, not a hard process. If that's something that y'all would like to see somewhere down the line, let me know in the comments below and I will uh, show you. It's very simple on these bicycles. Uh, the gears were already adjusted perfectly. Uh, I don't know if they've taken it somewhere maybe to have that done or, or that's still the way it was from the factory when they bought the bike. That's, that's very cool. Gears can be a little bit touchy every so often, but uh, these are adjusted just fine. And I've got one more surprise left and I think, think I've got something hiding in the garage that uh, we might put on this guy. Let's see if we can, uh, see if we can make it work. See if we can make it work for me. You gotta have somewhere to mount the fishing rod So there you go. We took something that was Goodwill ugly and turned it into Good Willy gorgeous. $80 Cannondale from the Goodwill looks pretty rough. Sometimes you gotta look past all that stuff up top. There's things underneath that can be the old diamond in a rough. All ready to go. Got my bag on the back, just need a rod holder. I gotta go to Walmart and get a rod holder. But this is a this is a nice bike. I don't know what I'm going to do with three bikes, but they're paid for. I don't owe anything on them. So anyway, there's just a few things you can look at if you're going out to try to find you a bicycle and you don't want to go to a bike shop and spend six, seven, eight hundred dollars on a bike. Goodwill, eighty dollars. Eighty dollars, some wax couple of SOS pads, Brillo pads, and some time, and you too can take an $80 bike and turn it into a $280 bike. It can happen. And now I'm getting ready to go for a ride. Even with all this wind. I might go backwards faster than I will forward, but I'm going to try it anyway. I just There's no way I can't do all that work and not take it for a ride. Hey, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one, whatever the next one may be.